Sky Dogs. Hiya. Hi, Aaron. Nice really to nice meet to you. meet you. My name's Julie Tramfield, so I work as a guide dog mobility specialist um, for guide dogs here in St Albans. So we're at the pet playground here, which we use to come and free run our training dogs. In my role, we get the best of both worlds, so we do dog training, but then we also look at each individual dog and each person that we've got on our waiting list, um, and we do that match between the two, which is really important. It won't work unless we get that match right. So have you got a dog yourself? I do, I have a, a Chow Chow. We turn two in uh, December. Half an hour walks and then we'll sleep the rest of the day, so. So it wouldn't make a great guide dog? No, no. absolutely not, because we get halfway around the walk and he sits there and Yeah, that needs wouldn't be very break, good. So, yeah, okay. he, he wouldn't get anywhere, anywhere quickly at all with, with my <laughs> dog, no. Is there any dog in particular with the best guide dog or? Well, we use um, straight Labradors, straight Golden Retrievers, yeah. German Shepherds, and then we use a, a mix of those breeds as well. So the dog we use the most is a cross between a Labrador and a Golden Retriever. And, you know, they're, they're really good for us. So we're going to meet Colin now. Mm -hmm. He's one of our vision impaired guide dog owners. Um, and this is his lovely dog, Arthur. And he's been with Arthur for about six years. So Colin, this is Aaron. Aaron Colin. Hi, Colin. How are you? Very good, you? How did you find the training and the whole experience? Because he was your first guide dog, wasn't he? Yeah, Arthur's my first guide dog. Yeah. Uh, the training was, was immense. That first, say, six months, you're so nervous, yeah. you know, and as I say to people, it's like when you first pass your driving test. You can go out on your own, but mm. you still feel so nervous. The more and more you go out, the more and more confident we got. He was probably full of confidence anyway, it was just me, <laughs> it was just me. Obviously, right now he's really chilled, he's sat by your side. How much energy does he have? When you when you allow him to come to a field like this, he is just yeah. like a pet dog. Yeah, I'll take the harness off of him. I'll put a, another collar on him with a bell on, so I can hear where he is, and off he goes. Do you like football, Colin? Oh God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a season ticket over uh, at the Emirates. Oh really? Yeah. Before I lost my sight, yeah. So I didn't lose interest. It's obviously you lose your sight and you just think, oh. You know, you obviously you go through all those emotions and stuff. I do go now and again when friends and family say, oh, there's a spare ticket. And my uncle is also uh, visually impaired. He uses the, uh, I think you do a radio program yeah. just purely for that match. Yeah. So he sits and listens to it while the game's going on. So when you go, you will listen to the, the commentary yeah. um, to, to have you an idea. Yeah, or, you know, I'll, I'll get all the, all the shouting in my ears anyway. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what's yeah. going on. There's a lot of commentary in, in the stand. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. People do understand more about guide dogs. It really has helped me. I do a lot of voluntary work for guide dogs as well. And people are so generous and so kind with their time and money and all that. It's so refreshing that I can do things I used to take for granted. Colin made a really important point there as well. We use a, a huge amount of volunteers and we genuinely couldn't do the job without them. Um, so we've got a couple of our fosterers here today. Maybe if we go meet them. Yeah, absolutely. We've got tiny little Tanya yeah. and we've got another training dog, which is Kobe. With the fostering, it's really, really important for us. It means that the dogs don't have to be in a kennel environment. Um, it means that we get to know a lot more about what the dogs do at home, how they behave in the home. Yeah. And that's all important when we match them up to the guide dog owner as well. This is Rachel and Leslie, two of our fosterers. Hello. Leslie's I'm been doing fostering literally for about 13 <laughs> years, so has been a very long-term fosterer. Um, and Rachel is uh, one of our newer fosterers. So we thought we'd, um, we'd get you doing a little bit of work with the two dogs. Okay. You can't come here for nothing, you've got to work. <laughs> um, so there's a really nice command that we use with our dog, which is touch. If you can't see, you've actually got the dog coming right up to you in a safe way. Because it's no good if the dog comes back, but it's standing a metre away, because you might not know that he's actually there. Kobe, touch. Lovely. Oh, good boy. <laughs> <laughs> First thing I'm going to show you is um, what we call an on-lead recall. This yeah. is like the first um, step to recall, just to check that they are actually going to come back to you when you let them off in the park. Good girl. I'll give her a big squeeze of paste. Lovely. I'll give you your own whistle. Come look then... properly on yeah, the neck. Yeah, absolutely. And then three short, sharp blasts. Good Perfect. girl. Perfect. And then I'll give you this to give her a squeeze. How much? Uh, just as much as you want. And then even more challenging, I'm going to go over with Leslie. Oh. 
Yeah. I'll give you the pace. Yeah. <laughs> you might have to call her name, sort of act a little okay. bit excitable. Tanya, Tanya, Tanya. Oh, Lovely. Wow. Really nice. Well done. Go on, <laughs> give her another, another big squeeze of that. Oh. <laughs> That's the good stuff. Can I keep the whistle? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> And that's about it for us today here, Aaron. Thank you so much for coming and meeting with us. It's been really nice. It's been uh, <laughs> really amazing to see the work. Really good. Thank and you. in the sunshine too. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a lovely day. Guide dogs.